right. Well, welcome back, Driver Nation. I am Sade and I have with you another guest. He's actually coming from Daytona Beach. He has actually been on the platform since January of this year, which makes it 2023. Um, so far, he has taken just a shy bit of 60 deliveries with us, but he has taken total food deliver costs being over $15,000. Let's welcome Mitch Hare to the platform here. How's it going, Mitch? It's going fine. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Is it okay if I call you Mitch or do you like Mitchell? Uh, Mitch is fine. Okay. We have a Mitch in the, in the building. I just like, wait, let me ask him first. <laughs> yeah. well, I, 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 usually, I usually get called Mitchell when I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think uh, me being in trouble as a kid, I get my full name. <laughs> Middle and <Yeah. last. laughs> <laughs> Well, let me ask you this here. We're just going to get started. Get to know you. Um, as a driver here, how did you even get started in the gig economy? Uh, I had a great job with Delta Airlines okay. and then COVID hit. Mm. And I do have a compromised immune uh, system. And so I thought it best that I take the buyout that Delta was offering mm. rather than risk perhaps getting COVID at the time there was no vaccine. Right. right. So I took the buyout and then I realized that, uh, can't live on social security. So I had to do something. <laughs> and that's, that's how I ended up in the gig economy. Oh, wow. So you've been doing this, what, since 2020 then? Uh, probably 2021. 2021. Okay. okay. Awesome. awesome. Let's see here. So over the past, um, or last few years, there has been a huge influx, um, in the gig economy here. Um, to you, what is the biggest benefit of being a gig driver? Well, there's quite a few. Uh, of course, I've heard several times flexibility, and that's um, not really the biggest issue with me because I'm retired. <laughs> so I kind of come and go as I please. But one of the things I like best about the Deliver That app is no matter when I arrive or where I arrive with the food, they're always happy to see me. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, come on in. <laughs> Now you say deliver that. Do you do other gig um, platforms or you just do deliver that? Right now I'm just doing deliver that. Now, okay. when I first started, I had to kind of fill in with, you know, Uber Eats, Grubhub, et cetera. Um, but it got to the point where that actually just became too much of a hassle. So, gotcha. you know, I, I don't need a ton of money. I'm not, you know, trying to survive on just the gig economy. It's more of a supplemental income for me. So yeah, the deliver that app has been just awesome because usually it's scheduled ahead. I know when I'm coming, where I'm going, what time. Love it. Well, that's awesome to hear. I think everything that you just said, just let us know how the gig world is really is. I've just had another driver who actually made this his full time thing, meaning um, the gig work being a driver and he's making over six figures. But for someone like you, you like I'm not trying to get paid like this. I just want to supplement, you know, enough. I think it's uh, it's a the gig world is definitely for everybody. You just have to find out what part is for you. Right. And if you're, you know, a little over the hill like myself, um, <laughs> this, this is perfect. <laughs> well, you don't look as old as you keep saying here, Mitch. <laughs> well, I don't know. It was uh, 50 years ago next month that I found myself in boot camp. Wow. wow. Well, you kind so of I'm, I'm, not, a, of I'm not as young as I look. <laughs> but you thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. here. Well, take it as a compliment. Please do. I did. <laughs> well, we got to know you um, a little bit background as being a driver, but I want to get to know Mitch outside of being a driver. So I'm going to ask a few questions here just to kind of get to know you outside of that. So my first question to you is, what is your definition of success? My definition of success is doing something that you enjoy doing and, you know, be good at it. Do the best you can do. And I don't care if you're a janitor or the CEO of a corporation. If you do your best, then you're you're going to be successful. I love it. I can I can say I agree with you. Success is definitely a different definition to everybody. Well, my next question to you is here, Mitchell. What is the craziest thing you ever did 
on a dare? <laughs> uh, you don't want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's give you a PG, PG version. version. <laughs> well, how, yeah, how about just, uh, I'll just pick one. Uh, I was in youth camp back when I was, uh, oh, just starting high school. Okay. And we were down by the lake. We had the bonfire going. And uh, they dared me to swallow a frog. And I says, well, okay, you know, put your money up, right? I'll do it. So they all pulled their money, came up with $5, which is a lot of money back then. <laughs> and so I swallowed the frog. For $5. And I said, I tell you what, I'll puke it back up for another five. And they came up with another five bucks. I made 10 bucks that day. <laughs> Sorry. That's a story. <laughs> Wow, you sound like you got way more than that. <laughs> As you dare. So you swallowed a frog for five dollars and then threw it back up for another five. All right, Mitch. <laughs> I wasn't always this charming, demure person you see on the screen right now. <laughs> well, listen, it helped mold and shape who you are today. So I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> so when you do have days off, because you seem like you you told me you are retired, what do you like to do on your days off? Um, I like to go fishing. Um, we do have a, a pool in our backyard, so we hang out at the pool a lot. Um, I don't do a whole lot of any kind of like physical activity just because of my uh, uh, physical limitations. Gotcha. So it's more like relaxing. If I'm not working, I'm relaxing. <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> Wow. My mom is a fisher. So as soon as the weather break here in Ohio, which it has, she's right out there fishing. Just the other day she went uh, night fishing. So that's her thing. How she relaxes. Cool. Well, we happen to be lucky. We're fortunate. We live right on a little lake. So the boat's out there. Oh, wow. And you can just you know, roll out there and away you go. Such, Such a blessing. blessing. <laughs> yes. So are you from the Daytona Beach area? I am not. We used to come down here vacationing okay. and we really liked the area and uh, we moved down here from Minnesota. Oh, I didn't wow. like the winters. <laughs> so that was kind of the big push. And I did get offered a chance to transfer with Delta Airlines down to Orlando. Oh, and I'm wow. like, I'm on it. <laughs> wow. So that's awesome. how we ended up down here. So how long have you been in the area then? About 10 years now. Okay, cool. Wow, so kind of fairly new. I'm pretty sure you like where you're at, right? And and yes, we do. Good. Yeah. Well, those are all my questions as far as getting to know you as a driver, then outside of a driver, getting to know you as well. Um, but you were chosen as one of our drivers to highlight for our July 4 special um, just because of your military background. So my next questions I will ask you is related to your military background. Um, my question to you is, when were you enlisted or draft in the actual military? I actually enlisted initially in December of 1972. Okay. And then I was on the delayed enlistment program so that I could get my high school diploma. And two weeks after graduation, I was in boot camp. Oh, wow. In fact, I had my 18th birthday in boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's exciting. exciting. Wow. <laughs> So how did your family or friends think about that back then when you decided to enlist? Um, my family was for it. My dad is an Air Force veteran. Oh, wow. uh, my friends, not so much. When uh, I joined back then, that was not, uh, you know, the thing okay. to do. It, it, it was a different time. Got gotcha. you. Uh, veterans were not appreciated. And, wow. Yeah, it was a little different. Hmm, that's interesting. Something I didn't know. Makes me want to read about it. Thanks for sharing. Not a problem. <clears throat> so um, you told me you, what part of the military were you in, though? Uh, I was in the United States Marine Corps. Marine. Okay. I spent seven years working aviation electronics. I worked on everything from Hueys, Cobras, OB-10s, uh, the F-4 Phantom, the F-18, uh, and the A-6. You told me all these things that you worked on. I'm asking, what what are those? Okay. Uh, the Huey, you, you, you've seen any Vietnam movie, the helicopter. Okay. 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 
The Cobra is the actual gunship. Looks like a dragonfly, has the missiles and, and things on it. Uh, the OV-10 was basically a scouting plane, but it did also have armaments. Uh, the F-4 Phantom was big in Vietnam, then the A-6. Um, the F-18 was the newest aircraft that I worked on right before I got out of the Marine Corps. Wow, that's pretty awesome. So it really just made sense for you to even start working for Delta. <laughs> it made sense experience. for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So why, what made you enlist or go into that actual um, service of the Army or branch of the military, I should say? At the time, um, I was going to be a preacher. And I decided that it's hard for me to try and relate with the veterans that were coming back from Vietnam if I hadn't served. So I decided mm. that I would first join the Marine Corps. And, you know, if you're going to go, you got to go with the best. So that's why it ended up with the Marine Corps. And after serving my time, I decided that being a preacher wasn't really what I wanted to do. Got you. Wow. Very interesting story. What do you do to celebrate July 4th? Um, <clears throat> we usually go see the fireworks. Uh, they're very visible from where we live because City Hall is like, you know, six blocks away. <laughs> And that's oh, wow. the big park where they <laughs> where they shoot them off at. And uh, yeah, nothing other than that. We usually barbecue, you okay. know, grill out. Kind of the same typical things most people do, I guess. That's pretty awesome. Well, that does wrap up my questions to you as far as being in the military. Excuse me, and being a veteran. But I do have one bonus question for you. And it's kind of go back to um, being a driver. If you had one piece, in, piece of advice to a new driver to maximize their time on the, on the deliver that platform, excuse me, what would it be? Oh, well, my advice absolutely would be know your area, know your restaurants mm. and know the traffic patterns. Cause a lot of times Google will tell me to go, you know, from point A to point B one way. And I'm like, uh, no, because I know the traffic pattern. I'm not going that way. So yeah, if you know your area, you can maximize your time, effort and, you know, keep everybody happy. Awesome. Well, Mitchell, thank you so much for taking time out to let us get to know you as a as a driver with Deliver That, but also get to know who you are outside of being a driver with Deliver That. Until we meet again, Driver Nation, see you again. All right. Thank you. Bye now. <laughs>